Friday. Sorry I've been missing. Oh, excuse me. I'm going to follow the trend of these young bloggers who have to have a microphone as big as this. This is my light, by the way. In order to make a video. So everything they do, they show you with one hand while they're talking into a microphone, which has a stand at the bottom. And then they put it down while they show you something and the sound does not diminish. So why do you have to talk into a microphone that's as big as this? <sighs> makes me laugh. But in actual fact, it makes me turn off because I can't bear to watch them when I can't see the mouth moving and I can't see what they're talking about because these things stuck in front of their mouth all the time. Mm. Can you explain to me why? It's not sound quality. Is it a trend? Am I missing something? Yeah, anyway, where have I been? Monday I went to the knit club and it was horrendous going up the seafront. I actually thought I got paralysed down one side that was nearest to the sea because it was oh cold. And there was men, is she? And I'm thinking, are you mental? Are you right in the head? I was like that, trying to put my coat over my face to try and stop the biting wind. Oh, it was dreadful, dreadful. So Tuesday I got up and I heard all this and I thought, if you think I'm getting up, you've got another thing coming. I got up and had my shower, sort of peeked outside and thought, yeah, clean night dress on, clean dressing gown, I'm staying in. <laughs> And so, of course, I wouldn't subject you to the view of me, in my clean, even though it's a clean nighty. wouldn't subject you to the view of me in my nighty. Hmm. Well, I'm wearing a dress that I had on yesterday because we went to the tavern, it's called. Last time I went to the tavern, I was disappointed because I'd had the carvery and the vegetables were more than al dente. They were crunchy and they were cold. So this time I thought, no, I'm not having that. I'll have scampi and chips. And I have to say, it was fantastic, yeah. Scampi were lovely and hot, well cooked. And the chips were piping hot, yeah. So, hmm. I'm glad I didn't give them a bad review on one visit because we'd been before and always been satisfied with it. But the last, not the last visit, the last but one visit, it was thumbs down, dreadful thumbs down. So I'm still wearing my dress, although I'm wearing a thicker cardigan, because it's cold. Wearing my beads, different beads than yesterday. I'm having a lot of trouble, as you know, with this hand. Waiting for my op, because I've got carpal tunnel. So because my finger ends don't work, I'm having trouble with the fastenings on my necklaces, which is heartbreaking to me, because I've got so many necklaces. So I'm kind of having to choose ones that go over my head at the moment or practically go to bed in them because I can't get them off and everybody else has gone to bed and I can't undo them. Anyway, what have I got this to this week? I have bought a sort of a necklace, but it's not a necklace. You'll see what I mean in a minute. Couldn't resist. Isn't that pretty? It'll go over a lovely black dress and jazz it up for a special occasion, won't it? It's got silvery beads. Oh, I couldn't believe it when I saw it for sale and it was quite cheap. And I thought, oh, it's got to be mine, it's got to be mine. I mean, it's not going to be an everyday necklace stroke, collar stroke, whatever you call it, is it? But, oh, I couldn't resist it. There you go. <laughs> Might look better if I wore it over there. <laughs> well, you can't see me. Yes. And I did get a new crochet hook, but I thought I'll try a different one, but I think it's actually got a blob for an end. You know, I like the inline ends. This is a third hour one. Not tried a third hour one, I thought I'll try one. Because I'm a bit short on me 450 hooks. I've only got the one that's got the, um, the wooden handle. You know, it's used to the one. And... Uh, can't seem to get one anywhere in the UK. You can get anybody else's, but I can only crochet with an inline. 
A lot of people don't seem to understand what I mean by an inline, but an inline is, that's not, whoops, that's not an inline, that's what I call a blob. An inline goes further up, you know, inside there, it goes more to a, hang on, I think I've got an inline, I can show you the difference. Bear with me one moment while I have a rummage in my bag. Oh no, I, it isn't in my bag, I took it out, that's right. I took it out, it's on me. Yeah. Oh, I got given a lovely present by one of the late the knit ladies. Anyway, that's the third I hope if you're interested. I got it from Wool Warehouse. But I don't know whether I can use it. I'll have a try anyway. Got a lovely present from one of the ladies in the knit club. She brought them in and she said, I can't wear them, they're too tight today. She said, try them on. You know me, I'm colours and bright colours, so I tried them on. <gasps> Yay me! Oh, they're gorgeous. I said, hmm. She said, you can have them if you want. I went, yeah, please, yes, yes. Thank you. So thank you, Val. I know she watches me. Aren't they gorgeous? Oh, they're beautiful. Makes me think I should make myself some. As you know, I've got lots of, well, not lots, I've got a few skeins of gorgeous, gorgeous hand-dyed sock yarn that I refuse to use for socks. Too nice to stick in your shoes, isn't it? You know, I want people to see if I've got beautiful hand-dyed yarn. I want to go, ah. The only trouble is I can't, I'm not going to wear these much, be, well, not outside, because I have a habit of leaving them places. And I would be heartbroken if I left these anywhere. One of our little knit groups has lost a scarf. She can't remember where she lost it handmade one so she's asked in various places where she's been i was fortunate in the fact that mine turned up again at the library so i did get mine back when it was lost anyway i'm still doing the cardigan you know the granny stitch one going down in gradients yeah still doing that but i broke off to do this hat uh, for my daughter-in-law the one i'm using i don't know if they still do it but it's gorgeous colors it's james c brett and it's called Tuscany Chunky. It doesn't have a name. It has a colour which is TU2 or something. They don't give them names. James Brett is a devil for doing that. I don't give them names. But isn't it beautiful? Anyway, I was using a pattern that I bought from Etsy. Yeah, I know. Oh, I think it was about eight pounds for the pattern. She said, gritting her teeth. What my daughter-in-law had apparently seen was this, which turned out to be two patterns incorporated in one. So I bought the hat pattern, which I thought I'll show you in a minute. It's called uh, the Lowish Dragon Hood, and I got it on Etsy if you're interested, but you need to fork out about eight pound for it. That's the one. The Lowest Dragon Hood. I've done most of it except I haven't done the plaited ties yet. But she said she'd incorporated it with the Matrix Hood. So I did the hood. Comes to start the Matrix Hood. That's in chunky. Matrix Hood. Super chunky. On a whopping big hook. So I thought, how on earth did she use the same yarn and incorporate two patterns? Because there was no way that I could do it. And I wasn't going to use two different colours. I wanted to use the same colour as I was using for the hat. So I just looked at it and the instructions were sort of very, very vague. This again is another Etsy pattern. Very vague. She does say, note, I do not use standard sizing for my pattern. The, the pattern is completely customisable. But she doesn't really give you a lot of help. She just says, measure yourself and do this, that and the other. And I was supposed to finish up with something that looked like that. It didn't say anywhere to make two pieces, but then it was talking about going round it to make the cowl. And I'm like, oh no. I'm... By this time I was having brain ache, you know, as I do with a lot of modern patterns. You probably notice me saying, <coughs> modern patterns, they make me. Some people say, oh, I don't understand a vintage pattern. They don't tell me enough detail. 
I'm like, I don't understand modern patterns. They tell me too much detail, but not enough actual facts, yeah. Anyway, I did it my own way. I did it my way. So I did. I've got to finish it off. It's the cowl part. I did it my way. It's got to be finished off. It's, it needs two little bits. It fastens with little clips under the arms. You put it on and it goes, I'm not putting it on, I'm ruining my hair, <laughs> such as it is. Anyway, the cowl bit comes up. And these bits, I need to crochet two little strappy bits to fit with these. They're sort of like seatbelt clips, you know, like clips. So I need to crochet the bits for that. That's what I've got to do, besides making the plaits for the hood. Anyway, the hood has been made. I won't try it on because, you know. Look at this hood. Look at this hood. Got the dragon's teeth all the way down it. You can't see it's only one. It's so long, isn't it? And it's got the, the dragon stitch all around the front. But as I say, it needs the two strands to, you know, the plaits. I will take a photograph of me in it on Facebook or Instagram, if you want to laugh, when I've put the end bits on. But I'm just hoping that none of my daughter-in-law's friends see it and want one. It's not that I wouldn't make another one, it's just that they will not realise how expensive they are. It's, it's taken six 100 gram balls. And I don't know whether this is available still, but something very, very similar to this. It varies between £4.99 and £5.99 a ball. Mm -hmm. So say we go for the cheaper option. Say we go for the £4.99, call it £5. Six. So that's £30 plus postage before we even start. So that would be without me putting anything on for my time, my weeks of effort, or well, my week effort. Week effort? <laughs> no, it was a week long effort, not a week effort. My week effort of making it. So I'm just hoping when my daughter-in-law wears it, if she gets me any orders, they realise how much it is going to be. I don't think they'd really want to pay £50. If I was in America, I would probably charge about $150 for it and get it, you know, but here, they'd want it for about £10, you know. But it's, I mean, if I'd have had to pay for the one, luckily it was in the shed, so I'd already paid for it, long gone, I don't know how much. So it would have cost me about £30 to buy the wool, if anybody wants one. So, yeah, and I'm not exactly going to crochet it for nothing. I'm not going to waste a week more of my time. Don't mind for my daughter-in-law. Don't mind for any members of my family. But if I'm doing it for a complete stranger, then no, I want a little bit of something for me. I've got logs to buy. That's £120. I've got some logs to buy. I've got the chimney sweep to pay for. That's another £60. I need to apply for a passport. I think that's around about £90. And that's notwithstanding all the other inc incidental bits and pieces I've got all during the week. I would love to know how people get paid for YouTube. I would love it, love it. I don't. Well, I do, but... <laughs> so, like, comment and subscribe, please. Do tell your friends that I am such a fantastic person that they need to view me. <laughs> I mean, I'm very lucky. I've got lots and lots of loyal, loyal subscribers who stay with me through thick and thin. And I really appreciate you all. Thank you very much. And I must get my backside in gear and answer all your lovely comments. But I am being lazy this last few weeks. I don't know what's wrong with me. It's the weather, isn't it? I suffer with that SAD. Seasonal attention deficiency, is it, or whatever it's called. That's not the right initials, but it's SAD anyway. So I get very, very down when it's weather it's awful. I come alive when the sun shines and it's bright and it's whatever. If I wake up and it's dull and it's windy and it's raining, I go, mm, no. I want to be a bear or a tortoise and hibernate. 
because that's what I want to do. I do not like the cold. And my hand, this one especially, the one that's waiting for the op, certainly does not like the cold. I have to wear, it's a wonder I haven't got my mittens on in the house actually. Because I can't bear. They go icy, they go dead. I thought it was Raynaud's, but apparently it's not. Well, touch or go Raynaud's, we don't know. Cheers. So anyway, the family aren't in, as you probably gathered, because I'm making a video. And it's lovely and quiet. <laughs> Rosie the Tornado made her little whirlpool on my bed, as usual. I've got a cover that goes over the duvet. And it's only a thin, like a loose one, just to keep the duvet clean. And if she comes in and jumps on my bed, she makes it into a whirlpool. And it's like... Zzzz. So I go in and there's like a walnut whip in the middle of the bed. I walked in yesterday and I thought, what's with this... I'd left a furry coat hanger, they're like velvet coat hanger on the bed. She chewed it. It was all in pieces. I don't think she ate any of it. I think she just chewed it, yeah. She's a mania for chewing plastic. I don't know what's wrong with the dog. Just her thing, isn't it? One of my son's other dogs used to love chewing furniture. Chewed the legs off dining chairs, tables, everything. And when we were coming looking at houses before we moved here, we went in one lady's house and all the dining table legs were all, and the chairs were all chewed. She said, it's the dog. And she chewed all the legs of the chairs. And, oh. It's good we don't have expensive furniture. Anyway, luckily none of ours chew furniture. Rosie chews cushion covers. I don't know why she likes to gnaw on, you know, the pointy bit of a cushion cover, especially if it's got a tassel. She loves to chew that, yeah. So I still haven't done any of my sewing, well, sewing stroke alterations. Sewing sounds a bit grand, doesn't it? Yes, no, I don't sew. I haven't done any of my alterations. I haven't done anything. It's about three o'clock in the afternoon here. I've had to put the light on because it's going dark. And I've just about rallied myself around, you know. The day's half over and I get so cross with myself. I'm like, you could have gone in the shed today. You could have done this. You could have done that. Family's not here. The dogs won't mind you. You could have gone in the shed. And then I look out and it's blowing a gale. And I know it's only a few yards to the shed across the garden. But I'm like, no, I don't really want to do that, do I? I really want to. Wait, well, it's warm. <laughs> and then my friend is mentioning that she was going to go and bid on a flatbed knitting machine in one of the auctions. Hopefully she'll get it for a reasonable price. If not, she won't buy it. And I said, oh, you're reminding me I need to go in the shed. I got given one. And it just wants cleaning and sorting out. But it's in the shed, and it's cold in the shed, and it's dark in the shed. <laughs> so when I could be using it, I could bring it in here, but I haven't got room to put it in here, to be quite truthful. I've got my sewing machine in here. And as you can see, the excuse that I can't sew anything because my machine in the, is in the shed doesn't work anymore, does it, Janet? No. It just means that you are not doing it because... You're lazy, Janet. You're lazy. I told you before, I procrastinate. I'm a great one at planning, plotting. In my head, I do a million things in a day. Do I actually do maybe one, two if I'm lucky? By the time I've had a shower, washed my hair, dried my hair, got dressed, washed the dishes, done my breakfast, da -de da I think days half gone. I don't know how I managed to work. I used to get it all done, do all my housework, work full time. And at one stage I worked full time, had a baby, looked after the child, did all the washing, did everything else, took him to school, went to work. <laughs> I must have been like a little human dynamo. All I can say is my dynamo has run out of whatever. <laughs> I need a get up and go injection. 
If you know of any get up and go injections, you know, can you let me know? Short of a cattle prod or a taser, hmm? maybe a quick taser when I'm getting ready in the morning. Zip, zip. Not a big taser, just a zip to set my senses alight, you know. <laughs> I just, oh, I know what it is, it's the sunshine. When the sun shines, I get up and full of the joys of spring. Well, as much as a 78-year-old can be full of the joys of spring. But full of the joys of spring I am. And I'm like, oh, yes, I'll do this, that and the other today. But when I get up and look outside, it's blowing a gale, it's freezing cold. I think, no, yeah, you're not going to do that, are you? Stop pretending. In your brain, you're going to get up tomorrow morning and do a million things. I'll be doing that tonight when I get in bed. I'll be plotting. I'll be laying in bed thinking, I'm going to get up in the morning and I'm going to do A, B, C and D. And then I'm going to pop down to Cleveland and get a bit of shopping done and I'm going to do this and that. And I'll get up in the morning, look out the window and go, mm, 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 ain't going to happen, John. Ain't going to happen. <sighs> Tell me what you do. What do you do to rev yourself up when it's cold and you're feeling miserable and your get up and go has flown out the window. What do you do? Do you put music on? Oh, well, that's another thing. I just tried to talk to Alexa in there and he's saying, your router needs redoing and of course the family's gone out so can't even listen to flippy music. Ah, I shall go back in the front room, put some YouTube on. See all these sweet young things who are about that thin, wearing dresses that they made on a central knitting machine. How the heck do they fit in a little narrow tube? I don't know. I need about six of these tubes to get around my body. How to make a dress on a central, a central, a central, well mine's an addy. By making 16 panels of sewing them together, Janet, and making yourself a bell tent. <laughs> don't think that's going to happen. This is why I want to get my knitting machine cleaned and going. I've got a chance, haven't I, with a hundred and odd needles. <laughs> no chance with 48 needles at all. 48 needles, I'd be wearing it as a sleeve, wouldn't I? Yeah, cheers. My Addy machine, the big one's still in the shed. The little one's here. I got those tension things, if you remember, that want to rosy chewed. <laughs> I've got some replacements but I haven't tried it since because it was not having any of it. It was all chomping and oh. Machines don't like me. They used to like me. My knitting machines when I had them. The big ones which I'm so sorry I got rid of. Don't know where I would have put them in here. I don't know where I would have put them but I had the ones that made a cup of tea. You know the ones with the ribbers, the laces and everything cost me thousands of pounds that big one did and I sold it to a lady who I knew didn't know the first thing about it she's going oh I wish I lived near her and you could show me how to cast on and I thought oh I'm selling her my beautiful Rolls Royce machine here for peanuts and she isn't going to be able to use it it's probably finished up on eBay <laughs> oh dear when I think I used to make all sorts of things on my knitting machine. I wish I had some proof. I don't. Everything I made, I haven't got anything left that I made on my knitting machine. I used to make everything and sell things. Yeah. Back in the day when I could sell things. <laughs> oh, I did find that lady's message she sent to me. She sent it to me on my Urban Gypsy page, Facebook page, which I haven't used for ages. So I did find the message and I have replied to it. She did come on and say, I sent you a message ages ago about two of your sweaters. Anyway, I've replied to her. I don't know whether she still wants them. She's probably gone off the whole idea by now. I've still got to decide how I'm going to make photographs. You can't take a photograph outside in this. I've got nowhere inside to take a photograph. Because they always say, take photographs where there's a nice background. Hmm. I don't think my bookcase or anything like that is what you call a nice background, is it? Where I take my mannequin and put my things on in front of the book, excuse me, the bookcase. And I don't even have a bit of bare wall anywhere. You know, a blank bit of wall anywhere. 
where I can stand it in front of. And as for standing out in the garden like I used to, my old house I used to go out on the deck in, beautiful day, trees in the background, birds singing. I used to take some beautiful photographs. Can't do that here. Who wants a photograph of my garment in front of the shed? Don't think so. And my mannequin is too big and clumsy for me to lump it up to the seafront <laughs> with a big bag. Imagine me. I would attract a crowd, wouldn't I? Lumping my mannequin all the way up to the seafront on my scooter with a big bag of grocery. <laughs> Taking photographs with a backdrop of the sea. It would look pretty. It would look nice. But I don't think it would work, would it? Unless I had one of those... You've seen those little cart things that they put dogs in, elderly dogs in, and push them along, don't you? Maybe I should have one of those and put a hook on the back of my scooter and drag it along the sea from behind me with my tripod and my camera and my... <laughs> oh dear. At least I might attract a crowd, you know. Who is this mad woman on the sea from waving shawls about and going, da da, da da. Try and persuade one of my mates to come and do it with me. <laughs> Stand over there while I take a photograph of you. Wave the shawl about for a bit. Let me take a photo of you and see whether I can sell it for tons. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it's being too cheerful keeps me going. Otherwise, I'd be depressed, wouldn't I? But I'm determined. I've got to go on holiday this year. I've got to. I've determined. I've made my mind up. So I need a passport. So I need the money for a passport. So I need to sell my stuff. I'm going to sell it all. Half price, I've said before. Half price, half price. But where I'm going to put the photos, I do not know. Oh. Answers on a postcard, please. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to go now before the phone starts going beep, 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 like it normally does. I'm going to go, I don't know how long I've been talking, but it feels like long enough. So I'm going to go back, finish off this hat and hood and everything. Maybe take a photograph so you can all have a laugh, you know, when you're wearing this silly hat, yeah. And there it goes. See, I told you. Bye for now.